This is the Geek Preacher here with one of the greats in the gaming industry, Frank Mincer. Frank is known for uh, his tremendous work with TSR. Uh, he's also known uh, here at Gen Con as the man in charge of the auctions. He is a tremendous auctioneer and just one of the all-time favorites to me. I've had the honor of meeting Frank and even spending time with him at Gary Con. And he, to me, is a legend. And so I just have him so happy that he's given me the opportunity to interview him today. So, Frank, if you would, please just uh, let us know uh, how you first got involved in gaming. Oh, boy, that's tough. Uh, I, I'm an old part. I was born in 1950. So, in that post-war era, of course, there was a lot more family group gaming participation and so forth. So, from an early age, I was playing card games, board games, and things with the family. Uh, starting with the old 3M games, but then I was very interested in American history, especially American Civil War, so on the side I was studying the history of the ACW and that sort of field, and when uh, Avalon Hill released their Gettysburg game in 1963, I was only 12 years old, but I dove right into that, because I could give you practically the orders of battle for Gettysburg off the top of my head uh, at that time. Um, and on the side on that, I went and I was a guide at age 12, the only, the youngest guide on the battlefield for the Gaysburg Centennial. Wow. So that was, that was my devotion to the American Civil War scene there and the history aspect. But then when the game came out for it, I played an awful lot of that and continued to play that and other vintage war games through the 60s, all as well as the family games, 3M type, to sit around the table after dinner, you know, and, and renew your acquaintance with your inner circle. There, yeah. Which is sometimes very valuable and very necessary. Oh, you get separated and focused on your own things, and dad has his job, and mom may have the job or taking care of the house, and you've got school, and then you can all come back together. You need something to do or talk about it. It's awkward if you get back together. Well, what have you been doing, Junior? You know, it's, you got to get a straight answer out of that? No. When it's like conversation <laughs> over a game, yeah, you, a lot more truths tend to bubble out when they're, the kids aren't. They don't have their shields up. I like that. Um, but then my gaming hobby continued through college and after college, uh, and more war games. But I was uh, a friend of mine showed up one day who I played a lot of various board games with, showed up with this new kind of game, and we started playing Dungeons and Dragons in its original version. Just the two of us. Uh, we would take turns. One would be the dungeon master, the other would be the entire party. Two or three player characters, and then some hirelings, etc., to flesh it out, because that seemed like you were what you were supposed to do. Um, and I'm, I'm real big on face to face gaming, uh, always have been, as I say, with the social aspects within the family, with, with other folks, and so forth. So it's in brief my history. Started. I think that's a great history. Uh, now, as a game designer and publisher, I heard a recent rumor that you are about to uh, start going back into the publishing business. Is that yeah. true? Um, back in, I was with TSR and wrote a lot of their mega sellers, uh, translated into various languages, sold and rolled over the entire D&D system, the best-selling Temple of Elemental Evil with Gary, uh, various other things. And... Um, I joined Gary to start a new company in the late 80s, and that didn't work out. So I got out of the industry and stayed out throughout the 90s. Uh, got a divorce, had some midlife changes, all that sort of thing, but found the right gal in the mid-90s. Wonderful. Uh, we're still together ever since and inseparable practically at this point, except when she, I, she, I shouldn't say she lets me go to the cons because we support each other's activities. Right. You know, and, and we're there for each other. And in my case, it's being there for this crazy game goes running off to these shows. Um, but although I've been out for quite a while, I've written a little bit here and there, but not much. I was an Origins Award winner for something I wrote with Grey Ghost Press back in the mid-90s. 
but nothing serious. Uh, during the uh, last 10 years, my wife is a high-end professional baker, not the hoity-toity stuff either, the good, wholesome, homemade apple pie or cherry pie sort of thing, and breads, etc., etc. We uh, opened and ran our own production bakery with three retail outlets, small store, and all that. So that's where I've been hiding for the last 10 years. But with the changes in the economy and, and various other things, baking is not a get-rich business. The profit margin is extremely small. And thus, uh, our investors were very unhappy after nine years of that, of getting minimal return. Uh, so we just decided to fold that up, oddly enough, making the decision very shortly before the world economy kind of tanked uh, late wow. last year, early last year is when we put it up for sale. So the long and the short of it, we sold that all off, uh, all the equipment, piece mail, et cetera, and moved down to northern Illinois for family things, taking care of her dad and that sort of thing. As a result, my wife is working, as a, again, as a high-end pro professional maker, and I am at liberty, as they say. So never being content with not having enough to do, I've been leaning into it and actually making specific plans towards executing some dreams I've had for a number of years, but was unable to address uh, because of the bakery commitment and so forth. So I've called up uh, and talked with a bunch of old friends, such as uh, great designers Jim Ward, Tim Katz, founder of Dragon Magazine. Yeah, legend. Uh, have other friends like Ed Greenwood, still very widely wow. known and respected, who's agreed to write a, piece, a product for me. Um, not just game products, either. Uh, we, well, my father is a retired Methodist minister. Amen. And has written <laughs> some... Um, possibly uh, semi-controversial, not seriously, uh, reinterpretations of, for example, the Paul and uh, certain books of the uh, Old Testament. Nothing really? nothing attacking four fundamental beliefs, but the reinterpretations and the spin that he feels some of the uh, theologians... Similar to the new perspectives on Paul? Uh, somewhat related to some of them. Okay. Uh, now, my own education in current theology is lacking, of course, but my dad is a 79-year, I'm uh, 89-year-old, I'm sorry, Dan, uh, still very active uh, retired minister, has been working on a lot of this for a long time. Wow. With his research, he uh, didn't get in a computer until he retired at age 65. So he's been using a computer here for 25 years, despite his, his advanced age when he started. Wonderful. Uh, so he's got all these manuscripts and things he's been working on, researching on the internet and so forth. So I intend to publish or plug into the, uh, the religious distribution networks, the existing ones, uh, with with works like that. There's another author of published self-help works who's dissatisfied with a small press publisher and shopping. So I'll be looking at pieces from there. Some poetry from a uh, well-known author that I can't mention at this time, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. So a broad spectrum publishing house would give us far greater stability. In reality, the gaming end is just a tiny jungle on the edge of a very large fertile farm of, of the world of publishing. So sure, we'll be running around in this jungle on occasion with game products, but the main focus will be, and for the sake of my investors, who uh, we're talking to, of course, as part of all this, uh, will be a broad spectrum regular full-scale publishing house. That is wonderful, Frank. I, I am so happy to hear this. You, you know that excites me personally. Uh, I'm so happy to hear your dad's still active and doing those things. I, I continue to find it amazing with all the rumors that came up about D&D. And my battery's going down, but uh, okay. but all the rumors that came up with D&D, to see the people that have had positive religious influences in their life that are in the gaming industry. Uh, it goes against the total myth that we're a bunch of amoral nut jobs. And instead, we have a good, you know, uh, background, I think. Mm -hmm. It's, it's, it, put it this way, you look at any population segment, uh, take a sample, stop a random thousand people at a sporting event, at a game convention, etc. You'll find about the same distribution of folks from all walks of life, all levels of income, and so forth. It's no different than any other, despite differences in the topics at the base of it. So watch for things from us in the future. We're looking at a full launch within two years. We're hoping for next-gen time, but no promises.
so many things are determined by so many factors. Right. We'll see how it all piles up. Well, definitely, I'll be wishing you guys good luck in your endeavors. Thanks a lot, Frank. Sure. Bye.